G'day everyone, welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. That's me. Now today, I'm talking about something that I haven't before, and it's an extinct species. Now that's a species that's been wiped off the face of the earth and will likely never be seen again. Now one that I'm really passionate about is the Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine, and that's what I'm talking about today. A thylacines are carnivorous marsupials. Their closest relative is the Tasmanian devil. So this means that they eat meat, but they still give birth to young that climb into a pouch, just like a possum or a kangaroo or a koala. A thylacines used to be found right over Australia and even up into New Guinea. But for the last thousands of years, they've been isolated to Tasmania and that was their last refuge. A thylacines might look like a dog, but they're not. They evolved over an incredibly long period of time to fill the niche, which means the, 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 the pocket, the area in Australia that dogs would have, but dogs were never found in Australia. We had marsupials and one of them turned out to look like a dog because it behaves the same as a dog. That's the thylacine. The thylacines were active predators, really good sense of smell, really good hearing, incredible eyesight. And whilst little is known about them, it's said that they would hunt small groups of ones or maybe a pair, even three at times. Now, where would they live? They live in open woodland that borders grassland. They live there because they can find shelter and they'd shelter in things like old wombat burrows, big dry caves or tree hollows of the trees that had fallen over. But they live in those open woodlands because they need to hunt things like paddy melons, bedogs, wombats and kangaroos. So the animal that's a predator is bound by where it can find its prey. Now the story of the thylacine's extinction is really sad and it's known throughout the world. Now, many animals face extinction because of humans, but indirectly, there are things like habitat destruction, climate change, uh, urban sprawl when our cities spread out. Lots of animals face that, but the thylacine, it went extinct because it was hunted to extinction. Humans saw it as a competitor and a predator of sheep. So because of that, over a hundred years ago, it was persecuted. At one point, there was a bounty on thylacines and a bounty is where there is a money reward offered for every thylacine you kill. How wrong we were, how sad that was. And now we've lost a species that was here only a hundred years ago. That's not too long ago. Think about your nan or your pop or old people that you, only a couple of generations ago, people were looking at thylacines. Dinosaurs were 65 million years ago. Thylacines were here just the blink of an eye ago. How wrong we were, hopefully attitudes have changed, and all the champions that are watching this, you are our next nature superheroes. Let's not let other species go that way. One of Aussie Ark's major flagship species is the Tasmanian Devil. It's the world's largest living carnivorous marsupial. And there are so many parallels between the devil and the thylacine. Now, the devil has reduced in numbers down to just 10,000. And there were a quarter of a million, 250,000. The devil doesn't get along with agriculture. People used to trap them to get rid of them because again, they eat lambs, but they have a place in the environment too. We all need to work together to make sure the devil doesn't end up like the thylacine. Now beyond that, some of its other closest living relatives are things like quolls. Uh, there's four species of quolls, the eastern quoll, the northern quoll, the western quoll, and the spotted tail quoll. They're all endangered. We all need to work together to make sure we don't end up with another thylacine. But when you look at a thylacine, keep reminding yourself, it's not a dog. It's a marsupial, like a kangaroo or a koala or a possum. But a few things to look at it, its mouth can open up to nearly 180 degrees. And that's probably so that it can grab on with a wide mouth to a big kangaroo or a wombat. Now again, look at its ears. They face forward. Everything on the head faces forward like a predatory animal. The eyes forward, ears forward. Great sense of smell. And look down the back at those stripes. Now, they use those stripes probably for a bit of camouflage. It's not really well known, but it's quite disruptive. Those stripes, you think about them walking through the bush, they blend in with the moonlight, the shadows, and it makes the predator harder to see. Now for your homework, I have a couple of things. Now first of all, 
When I was a little boy, I had a picture of a thylacine on my wall. And I love that species. And it reminds me of everything we lost. And it reminds me of everything we've still got to protect. So I want you to draw a thylacine. Send me your photos of it. Put it in the comments. I love seeing your drawings. But I want it to go on your wall. And I want you to think about protecting nature. Now, your second bit of homework is to tell me when was the last time a living thylacine existed. See if you can find it. That's all for now. See you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families. But we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us, and hopefully you. Uh, if you like what you've seen or want to show me your homework, just put it into the comments. But this is what I do, connecting people with nature, and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.